so I, I'm, I'm sensitive. I want to watch our time, and I want to now angle to the second question that we were talking that I was setting up before the break, which was differences with men and women. So when you think when you're coaching your female leaders, and they're working on positioning themselves for promotion, managing politics, is there any particular pieces of advice that you give female leaders uniquely? Yes. Uh, they really need to understand the politics. Mm. They really need to shift from this strong belief in meritocracy and that if I just keep my head down and work really hard that somebody's going to come along and recognize me and you know I'm going to be promoted because it doesn't work that way. Mm. Um, and they need to reframe their attitude about office politics as this is building relationships, this is building influence, this is, you know, if you take the politics, the word out of it, it sometimes helps women to learn that they have to engage in it. But it's first, you know, Brandon, it's that mindset first. Mm. Um, when I did research for my book, it was, I, I asked hundreds of women about how they felt about office politics. and. And I would say 99% of them said it was bad, it was evil, it was manipulative. You know, there were only a couple of women who recognized that you need to work these relationships. Um, but I help my, help my clients understand what the reality is where they work. Mm. So... Is there subtle gender bias? Who could be your allies? Who could be your champions? Who could speak for you when you're not in the room? Most of the businesses now are still run by men. No. Uh, there's still similarity bias where men would rather work with other men. And especially there's a hypersensitivity post Me Too. Mm. So who can be your allies and who can be your champions? Understanding specifically what does it take to get ahead in your organization? And what does it take for a woman to get ahead? And is that different? Mm. So without that inf information, you can't really position yourself, um, position yourself well. How do you figure that out? That last part, how do you get ahead? And then is it different for women? How do you figure that out? You observe. Okay. Right? And you look and you see, are there female leaders? Are there women who have made it to leadership positions? Uh, use them as a role model. How did they get there? What kind of relationships do they have? What kind of work are they doing? What kind of clients are they working with? How do they, what's their communication and leadership style? Um, maybe even how do they dress? But use the women in your organization um, as, as role models and maybe even mentors. Yeah, I like what you're saying. They're both around kind of how they approach work, how they get it done, how they build relationships, how they kind of present themselves, what executive presence means, both for men and women in that organization. And then also, I think you touched on this kind of subtly, but sometimes I, I know some businesses have certain seats you have to sit in if you want to move up. Like if you're in retail, you got to go through the path of merchandising at, at some point. That's just kind of the path you have to take if you want to ultimately keep moving up because that's kind of seen as the core of the business. So are there certain seats how, you have to how sit How long in? you stay in those seats yeah, depends that, on the strength of your relationships. Oh, that's an oh, interesting point. Yeah, great point. Yeah, because you could get stuck there for a long, long time versus a development stint, right? Where you're just- I know, and I have a lot of clients come to me because they're stuck. Mm. They've been in a position for too long. They feel that they've been overlooked. And that's where we look under the covers and say, number one, what are the obstacles in the workplace that you need to, uh, to deal with? And number two, are there ways that you're holding yourself back? 